Welcome to Fireside Gaming. I'm Billum, and my retro gaming journey this week has me covering Evergrace. Evergrace is a PlayStation 2 game developed by From Software and was one of the first games for the system. In fact, it was a launch title for the PS2 in North America. This had it joining two other From Software games, Armored Core 2 and Eternal Ring, as games that launched alongside the system stateside. Yeah, three From Software games were part of the launch lineup for the PS2 in the US. That blows me away when I think about the launch libraries that some modern consoles come with. Evergrace is a third-person action RPG with a major focus on using various different equipment types to progress through the game. That includes multiple armors, weapons, and accessories. Of course, players nowadays are used to the idea that they get loads of equipment while playing games, but Evergrace still manages to include some interesting elements. For example, weapons and armor can have different abilities that may benefit the player outside of combat. Take these floors for example. They're covered in poison that will drain the player's health if they touch them. However, players never have to touch them if they don't want to. That's because by this point in the game, they'll have likely found the Dragolos boots. These come equipped with a special ability called Float. That means players can quite literally use this ability to float over the floor and avoid the poison. Of course, that would be a bit overpowered if players could just use the abilities at no cost. While there's no mana or anything like that in the game, Evergrace does make use of equipment durability. Various actions can cause this to decrease. That includes using the special abilities of equipment as well as taking damage or even just wearing the equipment. Luckily, the game features a shop at every save crystal. Players can use this store to buy various items such as potions and antidotes as well as purchase other weapons and armor. They can also repair and upgrade equipment here as well. Just because Evergrace focuses on equipment doesn't mean players don't still have stats to manage. While there's no experience in the game, some monsters will drop blue or red fruits. When consumed, these let the player increase their character's stats. They get 5 points for the blue fruits and 10 points for the red fruits. If players really want to, they can even grind these fruits at some points in the game. I didn't do this during my playthrough of the main story, but did when preparing to tackle the bonus Shadow Tower dungeon in the game. I went so far as to play almost completely through one of the campaigns in the game a second time to get to a good spot for grinding red fruits. I used that to almost completely max out my stats on one of my characters. I still didn't end up beating that bonus dungeon, as the extra boss juggled me off the edge of the level to kill me. It takes about an hour to get to him through a gauntlet where there is no saving and no accessing the shop. I attempted it twice before deciding I just didn't care that much about the extra rewards, which are the Moonlight Sword that From Software loves to put in just about all of their games, as well as a little bit of extra lore that's easy enough to look up online. If the footage hasn't made it clear already, Evergrace follows two characters, Darius and Charlene. Darius is the game's close-range combatant with plenty of short weapons, such as clubs and hammers, for bashing enemies with. Charlene, on the other hand, does better with range. That includes a variety of weapons, such as bows and poles, that keep her away from enemies. Combat in Evergrace also isn't likely what players are expecting. Sure, it's an action RPG, but with a much slower and more deliberate type of combat. See, players have a stamina bar that they have to use when making attacks. The amount of damage that the player does is dependent on how full that bar is. That means players will have to be careful about when and how they attack enemies. That's because running in the game drains stamina the more the player does it, meaning that they have to wait for it to recharge if they want an attack to do more than minimal damage to an enemy. That might make you think this game is always slow, but there's another factor worth mentioning. This red bar at the bottom left corner is both the player's health and stamina bar. Players always have the same amount of stamina to spend, which means that the bar always drains at the same rate no matter how low the player's health is. However, stamina comes back faster if the player's life bar is lower. This creates an interesting gameplay mechanic of risk versus reward. Players can attack and deal greater damage faster at lower health, but they also risk dying to enemy attacks if they aren't careful. It's an interesting idea and one that makes Evergrace's combat more engaging than it initially appears. I've also got to address the elephant in the room, Dark Souls. It's hard to talk about a From Software game without bringing this series up. The reason I'm doing so here is because I feel you can see a fair bit of Evergrace's DNA in those games. That includes how the combat is somewhat slow and careful, almost to the point of feeling clunky. That means it might be something that Souls fans enjoy. On a much smaller note, I also have to mention the camera in Evergrace. The game doesn't use normal camera controls even though there's a second analog stick. Instead, players can only center the camera behind them by pressing R1. That may sound awkward to some, but it's something I quickly got used to. It reminded me of using Z to center the camera in Ocarina of Time, so if it didn't bother you there, it shouldn't be a problem here either. At this point, you might be wondering what the right analog stick does since it doesn't control the camera. Strangely enough, it switches weapons. Players can have two weapons equipped at a time, and a quick flick of the stick changes from one to the other. 
That may sound off, but it's better than the other option of pressing multiple buttons at once to try and change weapons. I tried that method at first, and I just couldn't get used to it. Evergrace actually has players go through Darius and Charlene's stories separately. Players can switch between them whenever they want at save points, but the two characters' stories won't cross paths until near the end of the game. Speaking of story, I'm actually not going to go into much detail about it here. If you know from software games, then you know they love to not tell a clear story and leave some details up to the player to decide on. It's something I love about them, as it creates this air of mystery. It's also great for the thinking gamer, because it lets them put together the story on their own without the game sitting down and hitting them with a lore dump. What I intend to do is create a story analysis video for Evergrace. There's a lot of interesting lore throughout it that I've been piecing together, and I feel it's enough to warrant a video of its own. Even so, I don't want to leave anyone out who doesn't want to stick around for that second video, so I'm going to briefly speak about the start of the game and what players can expect. I'll keep my spoiler tag in the corner so you can skip ahead in the video if you don't want to learn anything about the story just yet. Evergrace follows Darius and Charlene as they adventure through the lost empire of Rubain. This was a powerful kingdom that went missing hundreds of years ago for unexplained reasons. In its place sprung up Biliana trees, which are seen as holy by some and a curse by other. Darius and Charlene are both dragged into the Lost Empire without knowing why, and their journey has them seeking out an answer to that question. Along the way, players will meet a few other characters that will shine some lights on other secrets of the world. That includes why Rubain went missing, why Darius and Charlene were brought to this Lost Empire, as well as the mystery of the crest that some people have branded on them, Darius included. It's a fun mystery to uncover, and one that I believe will greatly appeal to fans of From Software's other games, such as Dark Souls and Bloodborne. And with that, the spoilers end here. So with all that said, I think Evergrace is a good game that's worth checking out. It's not the best game out there, but it has a lot to love. The gameplay offers its own unique twist on action RPG combat, and the major focus on equipment means players will have to weigh different strategies to get through some of the areas of the game. The story is also vague in all of the right ways, while still giving players enough closure, and that's something I'll always enjoy as an amateur theory crafter. I also have to mention that there's a prequel to Evergrace called Forever Kingdom that came out a couple of years later. I'm still searching for a copy, so it might be a little bit before I get around to reviewing it, but I definitely intend to. And with that, we're done talking about Evergrace until I get around to that story analysis video. I'll try not to keep you waiting too long on that. Feel free to leave a comment below sharing your thoughts on Evergrace, or any other From Software game for that matter. You can also chat me up on Twitter at Billum256. And as always, thank you for watching, and take it easy!